Well, good morning, Steve Bannon. So great to hear your voice. Joe, thanks for thanks for having me on, Joe. <laughs> thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so a lot going on, and um, maybe um, you what I what, what I was hoping uh, today is that we could kind of chat about get your thoughts on on what's going on with China and Hong Kong. I can maybe share my tidbits from from here in Hong Kong. I'm I'm live, as you know, in Hong Kong, and um, I wanted to discuss this post that I put up the other day too. So, um, so there it is. So just to, you know, whatever we can cover well, here. Listen, I think, yeah. you know, one of the, one of the things I'm, I'm so, uh, you know, excited about talking to you and the reason that I think Gateway Pundit is, uh, is so important is that the simple fact that you guys do as, as good or better coverage, um, uh, of, you know, of anybody, right. Oh, um, and, uh, and I think part of the reason, part of the reason is, you know, I've known you for years. We, I had, I think, on the radio show years ago. Yeah, yeah. And on the pages of Breitbart, on the pages of Breitbart, because I said this guy knows China, and he knows. I think it was that was like a thirteen or fourteen when we started talking about the islands in the South China Sea, and, and it turns out how Biden looks like he, you know, he's the one that blinked when they when they started putting the islands mm. up in the South China Sea, and all these aspects that have been going on at the beginning of One Belt, One Road, Made in China 2025. This is mm-hmm. this is just now becoming uh, apparent to the American people, and mm-hmm. this shows you again how the mainstream media in the United States doesn't cover yeah. uh, the really important stories. This is yeah. the defining story of the first half of the 21st century, at yeah. least, probably maybe the entire century. Yeah. And yeah. here people are like, it, it, yeah, people are like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Made in China 2025, right, mm-hmm. which has been going on for years. I didn't know about One Belt, One Road. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know about Huawei. No. Uh, you know, just across, just across the board is just, you know, one thing after the other. Yeah. So um, it's, um, it, it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's, it, it's incredible. But mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons your reporting has mm-hmm. been so. And look, as you mm-hmm. know, being in Hong Kong itself, being at the, the tip of the spear where I, you know, I, I spent so much time and then I actually lived for a while in Shanghai. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it does, you know, it, it, there's not a lot of Americans that really spend much time in China. Yeah, right. Um, and it's, it's one of the, and you've got insights, and I keep telling, uh, you know, Jim that you've got insights that other people just don't, don't yeah. have. And mm-hmm. one of the reasons is that you actually know the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to share something, too, as you were talking there. You know, a couple of years ago when we talked on your radio shows, because I'd written that book, uh, uh, really about the, I, I, gave, I came up with 10 ideas for the U.S. coming from Asia. And one of the first ones at that time, this is in the early Obama administration, was just, it was about, you know, spending and social spend. And, and the, the, the comment I made was that China at that time is the socialist country, and yet it's spending way less than the U.S. on sh- social programs. Per capita, it was just exactly. pennies, you know? And exactly. and I, also what yeah. hit me, too, was I'd, I'd come across uh, a dissertation, actually, by some Chinese woman in the U.K., and she um, noted how after she, uh, Jinping, took over, how he realized that China could not keep going the way it was and that they had it to, you know, basically start giving people property rights and he made this statement, which was real foreign in the communist uh, regime talk, and it was, we realize some people are going to get rich faster than others. And um, which, which he, you know, that's kind of amazing today how the socialists in America talk about this income inequality. But that was one thing Xi Jinping realized, and they started, and that was the change. And over the next 30 years, China had freed like a half a billion people. From abstract poverty through you mean, through, you mean, through the that's, you mean that's what Deng, you, that you mean with Deng Xiaoping yeah first, uh, yeah years ago. and he that, started yeah. that and yeah. so at the time you know back in Obama's administration uh, they were moving more towards uh, really capitalism while Obama was taking the U S more towards socialism so that was one of my observations but uh, now well, I, uh, think, I think I, I would call it state I would say I, I think they have a thing of state controlled capitalism is what China's got yeah right. They say they're communists, but they, 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 you know, people don't have any personal property, individual property rights. The reason the CCP and the elite, the truly really 12 to 15 families, mm-hmm. really own everything. Mm-hmm. Right? They, they have control of the apparatus. The apparatus, that's why it's so difficult. Trump's deal is so brilliant. If you look at what Peter Navarro calls the seven deadly sins of China, or the mm-hmm. seven verticals mm-hmm. that are really the heart of the Trump deal that the Chinese walked away from. 
one of the central ones in subsidies to state-owned industries. And that is what is it, it exported inflation and overcapacity throughout the entire world. It's one of the reasons it's so tough to get wages up. It's one of the reasons that the CCP's model is so crushed workers throughout the world, whether in Western Europe or the United States, mm-hmm. as part of the deindustrialization of the, the, the United States was to buy these state-owned industries. But the state-owned industries is where they get the skill. The CCP controls the state-owned industries and where the, the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party gets the skill that keep funneling, turning mm-hmm. the cash in these things and then mm-hmm. take it off the top. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, you know, that they're really a form of state-controlled capital. Well, isn't yeah, that so something? Totalitarianism, state and capitalism. That's, that's interesting. Way, with slave labor. There's yeah. really no safety net. There's no social yeah. safety net. That's what that savings rate, the reason they can't really build a domestic economy, they can't get domestic demand up. One of the reasons people save. The families are very traditional. They save. The reason they save, there's no social safety net. Mm-hmm. You're literally on your own. Mm-hmm. And so it is, uh, it, and so the West has become addicted you know, the capitalists in the West and the corporations in the West who have created this Franken this Frankenstein monster has mm. been created mm. by Wall Street, the city mm-hmm. of London and the global corporations. Mm-hmm. They provided them the technology and they gave them the capital. Yeah. And so this is our this is our monster we created. Mm. Right? And this and this monster now is, is turned on its turned on its masters. Yeah. And it, it feeds off the of slave it feeds off of slave labor. Yeah. That's and, what the, that's what that's what, and, and, and so we exported the jobs, mm-hmm. we exported our industry, yeah. and we and now we take in the fentanyl, we mm-hmm. take in the opioids because yeah. of the depression, the anxiety, the angst, mm-hmm. uh, the la- lack of self worth of, of, of the of the workers of the Midwest mm-hmm. in these factory cities. Mm-hmm. So true. Well, we I can tell you, you that, know, we're in a reverse opium war. We're yeah, in a reverse opium war, which is the Chinese yeah. Communist Party. This was this is all Xi's China dream. The China dream is predicated upon ending. The 200 years of humiliation mm. that was started, guess where, in Hong Kong, mm. with the first port treaty in what, 1848, and mm. he's bound and determined. The, the irony is, it's where Hong Kong, I think, is, is the CCP is going to actually break its pick, and uh, and you'll see the beginning of the destruction of the Chinese Communist Party because they're handling of the freedom-loving young people in, in, in Hong Kong. But no, this is... This this monster, mm-hmm. this Frankenstein, has mm. been created by the West, and it's not. And, and the West, the Chinese people have to, are going to free themselves, and it has to be. It has to be from them. Mm. The West can participate, help. The way it can help is to stop financing it, stop giving it technology, stop. Remember, the firewall is built on Western technology by Western companies. Yeah. So it's time to stop all that. And that's yep. one of the reasons the hogs here in the United States are hurt yeah. every day. Taking right. material like your great article the other day, which mm. is still the most insightful, most insightful article. Mm. Why they're uh, why why they're actually even at the table mm. about the market crash, right? The, mm. the you know, and, and hopefully, hopefully, our leaders, you know, continue to drive home and cut cut yeah. a tough deal. Well, I tell you what, I loved your video that I put in that post. I saw it. I was down in Australia. Maybe a couple comments, first of all. So when I I, I, have, I was at a business meeting last week with a bunch of top executives, right? And we're we're having this discussion, and I'm like the, I'm the only guy there that likes Trump, and they all know it, you know. But uh, I'm not afraid to speak up, you know. And I think they get a kick out of that too, for for a matter of fact. But um, so we were talking about China, and I was saying I just don't know, you know. They've overbuilt. They have overbuilt here. And uh, I noted some other things, you know, the off-balance sheet liabilities and things like that that we don't even know how big they are. And um, one of the guys said, well, you know, with those buildings that they've overbuilt, yeah, they can just put people in them. And, you know, at first that makes sense, but here's, here's the deal. You know, the dilemma, the thing that hit me is that, well, yeah, you can put people in those buildings, but they've got to have something to do. And if they don't have something to do, then it's going to be just like, our, our inner cities where we've given these people places to live, et cetera, and they don't have something to do. And those neighborhoods go to, you know, they go to hell. They go to drugs. They go to crime real quick. So China's got a problem there with those buildings. They can't just throw people in them and not have jobs there for those people to, you know, to, to benefit from. So, and that was an observation I made the other day. But, here, but your video about... Uh, really where we're at right now and and you said something in it that was just to me profound it's like he, you said something like right now we could take this whole thing down and then you were speaking about the regime you said it's it's basically built on a house of sand so you want to extrapolate on that some 